Hey there guys, what's going on? So the year is creakily progressing forward now, and while things are still quite early on in 2013, we definitely have a quite firm post-holiday grasp on where things are supposed to be. Of course, check back with me in a few months first to make sure that I'm not just full of it. Any who reviews here on my channel have gotten off to a slightly slow start given the break after finishing end of the year duties and the week's absence I just had to deal with the flu. It's been a slightly slow go in getting January's events going. However, that certainly hasn't stopped the flow of great new albums coming out and a ton of stuff that I want to talk about eventually. I'm going to get to that, but in the meantime I wanted to fast forward past those a little bit to arguably my favorite release of January. So, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the local natives and their highly anticipated second release, Hummingbird, here on the Vinyl Corner. Enjoy. Powder in your hair, staples in your jeans, fireworks at the water, you were holding the styrofoam cup, held between your teeth, telling me how you go. So the Local Natives are a group that happen to be local natives of Silver Lake in Los Angeles, California. Three of the members came together in Orange County after attending the same high school and graduating from the University of UCLA. And in late 2008, Taylor Rice, Ryan Hahn, Kelsey Ayer, Matt Frazier, and Andy Hom gathered together in Silver Lake to record a home they dubbed Gorilla Manor, which also would coincidentally end up being the name of the record. Released in late 2009 in the UK and early 2010 in the US, the self-funded Gorilla Manor was co-produced by the band, and in fact everything the group creates is largely this type of widespread collaborative effort. It didn't take long for it to pay off either, as the band began catching press in 2009 at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas, where the natives drew comparisons to the likes of the band Vampire Weekend and a West Coast version of Grizzly Bear. The band embarked on more touring in the years that followed and continued to expand on their name, though changes did inevitably come as the band announced parting ways with Andy Hom in 2011. Other more positive change also occurred as the natives later announced the fact they built their own studio and that they were at last going to release a new follow-up album called Hummingbird here in 2013. And thus, finally, we've arrived at that early 2013 release date, and in my mind at least, there are certainly a few questions. First of all, can Hummingbird provide a satisfying payoff from the very solid debut that was Gorilla Manor? And secondly, will this be the type of album that's memorable enough to stand up across the scope of a full year of releases? Some things we have no way of knowing yet, but when it comes to others, I think a review might just cover it. So let's get to it. Here's my review of the local natives and their new album, Hummingbird. Sentimental, melancholy, sprawling, triumphant, exceeding expectation. There are many words and many thoughts I had and hoped to have heading into my first few listens of Hummingbird, and I certainly had my own level of what I hoped this release would end up being. Gorilla Manor was indeed a stout beginning from a young band just arriving on the scene, and the more that I've heard it, the more that it's grown on me, the harder I believed it was going to be to top. And yet, here we are with me saying just that. It's been surpassed. When I first heard Gorilla Manor, it was clearly the effort of a band that sounded young and snappy, which is no detriment, but Hummingbird feels like a culmination. It feels like the nearly three years this band has had together since their first record to grow and fail and come together and overcome and ultimately succeed as we all do in life. Music is a steady friend for many of us, whether it's in good times or bad, and I feel as though having that as a direct creative outlet only makes those life feelings even more profound for the musicians we choose to listen to. Whether it's the staggered cry for love that's disappeared, as with you and I, the reluctant acknowledgement of knowing when life has to go on, as with three months, or in what's one of the most heart-aching strokes on the album, a questioningly plaintive eulogy for a parent who's passed on, as with Columbia, the profound feeling of the struggle to overcome is evident. These years have had their share of trying times and they've taken a toll for these four individuals, and Hummingbird carries it off with a much greater sense of emotional depth than what Gorilla Manor started with. Life is that thing that happens when you're busy making other plans, and no matter what, you have to learn how to take it in stride. Waiting for my words to catch like I'm trying. 
sunset soaking wet see through skull And there's certainly a lot of other elements about this record that impress me as well. Whether it's this more weathered territory, you know, the blending of sound that still mixes their trippy, percussion-laden brand of folk against the sprawling, iridescent-enhanced wash of sound, it just really, really works. And I have to make a special note in regard to lead singer Taylor Rice, whose vocal performance all throughout Hummingbird is probably my favorite aspect of the album. You can really feel the sensation of cresting a wave that feels 10 stories high one moment, and the breath of a weakened loneliness that almost feels as though you might never see the bottom in the next. Hummingbird is a beautifully composed effort from beginning to end, and all those words I used at the beginning don't even go far enough to truly define it in the way it should be. It certainly does exceed expectation though, and as far as follow-ups go, I don't think there's much more you can really achieve that's better than this. It might be a little bit of a difficult task a few years down the road when it's time for the next record, but for now I don't think there's much they didn't do right here. 2013 is indeed off to a great start. My favorites from this one are the aforementioned Columbia, Three Months, and You and I, along with the heavy ebb and rising tide of Breakers, and the mournful acoustic role of Mount Washington. In a lot of ways, Hummingbird feels like a continuation and a process of growing up for the local natives, and moving into a type of sound that incorporates the past, but also moves forward beyond it in more ways than one. The growing pains are also evident, but they're carried off in a way that only sounds better and better with each listen. I give Hummingbird a 9.2 out of 10. So that's it and that's all for me in this Vinyl Corner installment, folks. If you want to see the innards of this vinyl presented in more detail, I highly suggest you go check out the video I just posted for it not too long ago on my channel. And of course, I hope you enjoyed my review. But until next time, folks, here from the Vinyl Corner, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon. Keep it from